If we could just do better, please stop harsh treatment against wives. Stop the judgment. Stop the torture. We can do better. We can. Stop violence against wives. The lives of wives matter. Record to gender-based violence. Women... Hello beautiful people, happy December. It's been a bit and I've missed you. Welcome to Footprints with Beth Swell. So this December, I just couldn't hold back because in the last few days and in the upcoming days up till the 10th of December, I think we are doing this 16 days um, activism against gender-based violence. So in as much as I wanted to go on in my silence, I just couldn't hold back because, you know, Footprint of Betwell is that platform where we get to talk about women empowerment, we get to talk about the family and other interesting um, issues of about faith and culture. So today I just want to share with you one of the things I've noticed um, in relation to gender-based violence. You know, there's so many things we talk about related to gender-based violence, but there's this particular subject I want to raise today. Um, concerning gender-based violence. As you know, gender-based violence is any form of torture. It could be physical, it could be emotional, that is meted against someone at their workplace, in the society, or in their family because of their gender. And unfortunately, um, gender-based violence in the years past, and even today, is mostly meted against women. So today I'm here to talk about gender-based violence in the family. Some people could call it domestic violence, but I'm not talking about the regular domestic violence. Today I want to talk about the harsh judgment and torture that society and families um, meet against wives. I don't know if that rings a bell, but this is a kind of violence that uh, it might not be very evident, but it causes a lot of depression, it causes a lot of frustration, and it limits women from leaving their full potential. By women, I mean women who are in marriages and women who are in relationships who just want to leave and continue leaving, you know. But sometimes this judgment limits the way that they thrive. And that's why we're talking about it today on Footprint with Beth. Well, saying that we all have to think about it and know that sometimes women who are in marriages, wives, are so judged that they can't even breathe. So this is what we'll be talking about today. So thank you so much for joining. I hope that um, we get to share something. I hope that we get to learn something. Whatever the case, um, if you have any comments at all, please leave them in the comment section. Click the like button and please, please share this video because we need to sensitize as more, as more, as more and more people about um, there's different aspects of violence against women. So thank you so much for joining, please. Stay glued. Let's talk about wives, violence and torture. This is not just about the husbands and the wives. We're talking about the society as a whole being so harsh on women just, became, just because they became wives. So where I come from um, in Cameroon and in most parts of Africa, and I'm sure in other cultures, the community tends to um, place a very huge weight upon the shoulders of women. So generally, like shoulders of women in comparison to men. So generally, right, in Africa, a good man or a good husband is the one who provides. So a man who provides is perfect. He's flawless, he's a flawless husband, he's a flawless father. So being a responsible man is more or less limited to, um, is measured by the yardstick of provision. So whatever mistakes a man makes or whatever evil he commits after providing for his family, no one really wants to think about it because they feel that it's excusable. Generally, mothers always find excuses um, for these husbands who are not meeting up with their responsibilities apart from provision. So comparatively then to the woman or to the wife, right? So we see that it's different because every other family burden and responsibility seems to be on the shoulder of the African wife. 
and I think it's a bit too much pressure for the African wife because I, 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 I wrote a few of these things down because I'm sure that a lot of people can relate with what I'm saying. So for example, if you say to your mother, um, um, mama, my, my husband is never at home with the family, she'll be like, so what? If you say, oh, mama, my husband is cheating, it's like, it's normal for men to cheat, they're polygamous in nature. If you say, oh, mama, my husband beats me, she'll be like, persevere, he's going to change, keep praying, something will happen and he will change. Remember, good husbands are scarce, and by good husband, she means a husband who provides. And then you'll hear something like, oh, mama, my husband is disrespectful towards me, he talks to me anyhow, especially in front of people, and they're like, who are you? He's your husband, he's older than you, he can do what he likes. You know, just respect him and obey what he tells you. You're being stubborn. And some women will be like, oh, mama, my husband is not accountable. He doesn't tell me where he goes. He doesn't tell me how he spends money. He just bosses around and he doesn't care how I'm going on, you know. And they're like, so what? Ha, you girls have really high expectations these days. So this is the typical mindset of a typical African mother who believes that the greatest luck a woman can find or a wife can find is a man who provides so once the man provides everything else is excusable now let's switch the coins and go to the wives right i wish they were this tolerant when it came to women but they're not <laughs> they're not tolerant at all um so for some people wives is a synonym for perfection so you can be a human all you want make all the mistakes you want but the moment that you decide to become a wife, everybody, I mean the society, I mean your family, I mean your husband's family, your in-laws, I mean your friends and your husband's friends, everyone expects you to be perfect, flawless, in fact, to stop being human, you know. And the good wife trophy is the most prized and it seems to be the most demanding job in the world. In Africa you know um, that good wife is a lady who has cutting-edge skills and character most importantly she's infallible no blemish at all she's not allowed <laughs> because the moment she slips woo, everybody like what what have you done what are you doing everyone goes on and on and I'm like God can wives just breathe right? So the good wife is expected to be flawless. No room for mistakes, no room for shortcomings, no room for imperfection. That will be so intolerable as a wife because the world is going to judge her. Physical, uh, physical in-laws, online in-laws, every street corner, every neighbor, they are waiting to crucify any wife who dares to make a mistake. And sometimes the standards are so high, you wonder if a human person can actually fit into the description of what a good wife should look like. So, everyone seems to agree that every human person is, if is fallible, can make mistakes. But no one seems to agree that a wife gets to be imperfect. For what? No, it doesn't even matter how old she is. She could be in her 18, she could be in her 20, she could be 18, she could be 25, but she has to understand everything and be perfect before she gets married. Nobody gives her that room to make any mistake. So as a human, we can make mistakes, but as a wife, mm -mm. you don't have a chance. You dare not. Everyone can struggle, but the wife should never struggle. She should get along with everybody. She has to be superhuman. She should never complain about anything. She should just be collective, calm, and perfect today and every day. How is that possible? So everyone forgets that every wife is a regular girl who has made mistakes, who continues to make, make mistakes, who is human and will continue to be human. But she has been bestowed with the responsibility of a wife, something she's never that experienced for. I mean, someone will be 20 years old, 25 years old, she gets married. She barely knows what adulthood entails. She barely knows what being a wife entails. But everyone wants her to go about it graciously and to dare not make any mistake because the moment she does, people will judge her and and condemn her and torture her and place harsh judgments on her goodness 
Some of these girls are still trying to find themselves. They don't even know where they are in the world. They don't even know what they want to do with their lives. Cut them some slack, for God's sake. Lots of these people have no experience at all. Personally, when I got married, I was 24. You know, I was naive about so many things. I was naive about motherhood. Uh, I was naive about basic things like calculating my menstrual cycle. I could not bake. I, I didn't even know how to wash an oven. I didn't grow up in that kind of setting. I didn't know many things. I didn't know much about money management. I didn't know about house management because I never lived alone all my life. You know, I was 24. I was just trying to figure out what wolves are there in the world. You know, I was just trying to get along with myself, with being an adult. And boom, marriage happened. I was excited. But then you know what? All of that excitement would just come crushing because the judgment, the torture, they don't even allow you to rest. They don't even allow you to breathe. Everyone is expecting you to be good and perfect. Goodness, but with time and experience, this is me, I'm figuring it out. Some of those things that seemed so impossible back then, I'm figuring them out. Yes, today, I can say that I have been learning, on learning, integrating, on integrating, Man, it's not been easy. My judges have always been on my neck with a sledgehammer, but I'm thankful for growth because even this judgment can cause you to grow. So please, my people, I'm just out here today to say everyone who is a wife or a husband only learns on the job. Nobody was born to be a wife. Nobody was born to be a husband. These people learn on the job, but society can't seem to to give wives a chance to figure out what wives are supposed to do, what wives are expected to be, what being a wife is all about. No, wives are supposed to have learned everything in their mother's house. The moment they don't exhibit the standards, because everyone has their own standards. You have the standards that your mom set for you. Your family, uh, your new family has a standard that they have for a wife. The society has a standard that they have for a wife, you know? All of these standards, it just clogs your brain, but nobody thinks about it. Some of these children did not even have mothers growing up. They didn't have models. I mean, they are women. So because they didn't have mothers to raise them, they didn't have models to look after. So they're not entitled to marriage. Who are you? Are you God? People are not upright like that. But life is a learning curve. We learn, we unlearn. I'm not talking about loving correction, guys. Everyone who knows what loving correction looks like and they will appreciate it. I'm talking about torture. I'm talking about judgment for the least slip. I'm talking about you not being able to bake, for instance, and it's an abomination for your in-laws. It's an abomination for the world that, oh, you gave birth, are you still trying to figure yourself out? You can't dress up properly. They're like, you look like a maid. That's why your husband is going out. So everything is blamed on the wife. People are blaming a 20-year-old wife for what is happening in a marriage that is that she is in with a 50-year-old man. And you're wondering, is it not the older person who is supposed to be directing the younger person? But no, the wife has to get it right all the time. You know, correction causes to grow. It strengthens. But you see judgment? Goodness, judgment frustrates judgment infuriates judgment this judgment that you're meeting on wives it causes tension it causes bitterness come on now we can do better we can stop the harsh judgment on wives we can stop this form of gender-based violence being a wife is not a crime this is very common you know but it goes unnoticed because people think that that's just the way it is and it is stifling it is depressing especially on new wives. So depressing. I remember one time I was talking to one of my uh, 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 little mentees and she was asking me, she said, Mama, I have a feeling that marriage in Africa was created to torture the woman. Because that's how it feels. Sometimes you feel suffocated because you have to get everything right. Come on. These people are human. You know, the most intriguing part is that this torture, <laughs> You will think that it's men only who do it. But surprisingly, women are the champions of torturing these wives. Unfortunately, 
they are champions. They hold that lamp of judgment, the eyes of a wife, without mercy. They hold that sledgehammer ready to hit your head the moment you sleep according to their dictates. <sighs> Fellow married women, I've seen bullying young girls who just got married, bullying fellow women who are still trying to understand what's going on around them. Women who intend to marry. You know, they've not even married though. They don't even know what marriage is about. They too are there passing judgment. They don't even know what awaits them. And you think that mothers have experience, so they know better. No. Mothers, even mothers who have daughters, are the harshest of them all. They torture the blame, the judge. Goodness. I don't understand what's going on. Sometimes it feels more like, is it revenge? Is it punishment? Because it's not normal for a woman who has maybe been through stuff. It's easier for you like me. You know, I, I, I've, I've been down this marriage line barely 10 years, but there's so much, so much uh, 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 discrimination against wives that it has given me this soft spot for fellow wives. You know, every time I talk to a wife, it's easier for me to see through their pain because I have been through pain myself. There's this way that marriage puts you in a box in Africa. It's, it's crazy to think that fellow women who have been through the same system don't see anything wrong with it. And they are, they are, they are the king perpetrators. It's sick, it's sad. Is it payback? Is it payback like bullying in school? Like, because I was bullied, then I get to bully you. And then what about you who is not even married? Who is still planning to get married? Who intends to marry? That harsh judgment you're passing on your brother's wife. That harsh judgment you're passing on your friend's wife. Do you think you're going to have it easy? If all of us could just think about it, you know, correct with love, you know, slow down on the judgment, Maybe the lives of wives will be much easier. But please, no one gets that chance. If only we could allow wives to learn, to breathe, to unlearn, and to just be human. Make mistakes, learn from them, get corrected with love, get hugged when they are depressed because of motherhood. Get empathy, especially from fellow women. Goodness, if we could just do better, please stop harsh treatment against wives. Stop the judgment. Stop the torture. We can do better. We can stop violence against wives. The lives of wives matter. Red card to gender-based violence. Women deserve better. Wives have a lot they are dealing with. Some of these women even have children. There's so much she's taking on. She's only in her 20s. Give her some time. Give her some space. Let her breathe. Let her learn. Let her unlearn. The patterns that people grew up with, they have to unlearn them. Please, stop. Stop gender-based violence against women, especially wives in this case. Correct them with love. Show them mercy. Thank you very much. You know, this gets me emotional because I see, I see it a lot. But I thank you so much for staying to the end of this campaign. <laughs> thank you for staying. Please comment. Tell me what you think about all of these things I'm saying. Like this video, please, and share so we can spread the word and say, you know what? Wives deserve me. Wives deserve better. Um, wives lives matter and red card to violence against women. Tata, take good care of yourself.